Before we begin, we must recognize the delicate nature of the issue we'll discuss. The following story delves into terrifying and traumatic scenarios regarding child abuse. We recognize the emotional impact this problem may have on our viewers, and we extend our deepest wishes and care for your mental well-being. Please continue to take care and feel free to prioritize your mental and emotional health as you watch this narrative. Could you imagine the pain of a child suffering in silence? Every year, over 5 million children in the United States alone are reported as victims of child abuse and neglect. Among them was a little girl named Brianna Lopez, whose tragic story sheds light on the dark realities hidden behind closed doors. In today's video, we embark on a journey through the heartbreaking life of baby Brianna, a young soul whose existence was marked by unimaginable suffering and cruelty. We'll explore the profound impact of her story on child protection laws and delve into the societal factors that contribute to the prevalence of child abuse. Child abuse is a complex problem driven by a variety of psychological and cultural variables that contribute to its prevalence. One type of abuse that frequently goes unnoticed is emotional abuse, also known as psychological abuse. This sort of abuse involves the ongoing maltreatment of a child's emotional well-being and can take many forms. Emotional abuse refers to purposeful attempts to induce fear, shame, isolation or neglect in a kid. This might involve verbal assaults, frequent criticism, disparaging statements or threats of damage. Emotional abuse erodes a child's feeling of self-worth and security, leaving psychological scars that may continue until adulthood. Societal factors contribute significantly to the perpetuation of child abuse, economic stress, Social isolation, substance misuse, and intergenerational trauma are just a few of the many factors that contribute to the cycle of abuse in families. In the heart of Las Cruces, a little tiny house served as the background for a tragedy that would rock the city to its core. Baby Brianna Lopez was born in the summer of 2002. Brianna Lopez, often known as Baby Brianna, was born on Valentine's Day in 2002 in a hospital in New Mexico. Stephanie Lopez and Andy Walters gave birth to a small bundle of joy who was pure and full of potential. But behind closed doors, behind the limits of her own family, evil lurked, ready to devour her. Brianna's life has been characterized by neglect and abuse since the moment she was born. Her parents, Stephanie and Andy, were dealing with their issues and fights, leaving them ill-prepared and emotionally incapable of offering the loving care that a kid so badly needs. Brianna's innocent demands for compassion and attention evaporated into thin air, lost in the din of turbulence and dysfunction that consumed her household. How could a kid so fragile and defenseless be pushed into a world where her most basic needs for love and safety were met with silence and indifference by those who were supposed to provide them? Baby Brianna has been subjected to unfathomable torture since birth. Slaps, pinches, kicks and punches. The list of torture seemed endless. Her father and uncle, who were supposed to be guardians, were the architects of her pain. The torture went beyond physical punches to include the most horrible things conceivable, such as rape. Every day was a nightmare for this innocent youngster, a never-ending cycle of anguish caused by words and acts. Brianna's abuse increased as she grew older. Her parents, angered and upset, became increasingly abusive with her. Her young body was covered in bruises and welts, a horrific reminder of the violence that had become a regular part of her existence. Brianna's physical scars, however, were just a fraction of the pain she felt. The emotional and psychological toll of living in constant fear and uncertainty caused a far deeper wound, altering the course of her brief and tragic life. How could a child endure such suffering at the hands of those who were supposed to love and protect her? Brianna Lopez's tenacious soul withstood traumatic and unrelenting assault within the boundaries of her own family, refusing to be extinguished. Despite her young age, she showed tremendous courage and resolve to survive, demonstrating the intrinsic resilience of children who suffer terrible adversity. Brianna found refuge in the basic pleasures of youth in her little moments of relief from the anguish. Despite the shadows of dread and sorrow, she found short moments of joy and laughter, enjoying childlike innocence in the face of tragedy. These few moments, she was provided a ray of hope and light in an otherwise gloomy and chaotic existence. How could a kid, subjected to such violence and neglect, muster the fortitude to enjoy moments of joy and fun in the darkness that threatened to swallow her? It demonstrates children's extraordinary perseverance and unshakable spirit, even in the face of unthinkable suffering. The evening of July 18, 2002 marked a turning point in baby Brianna's tragic story. 
As darkness descended upon the world outside, a sinister game unfolded within the confines of her home. Surrounded by those who should have cherished her, she became a pawn in a twisted game of cruelty and sadism. Tossed into the air like a rag doll, she collided with the ceiling before crashing to the ground, her screams of agony being brushed aside. How could those meant to love and protect her derive pleasure from her pain? How could her cries for help go unanswered by those who should have rushed to her aid? As Brianna's third birthday approached, the tension within her home reached a boiling point. Stephanie and Andy, consumed by their demons and frustrations, lashed out at Brianna with a ferocity that sent shockwaves through the community. Neighbors, who had long suspected something was amiss behind the closed doors of the mobile home, were horrified by the sounds of Brianna's cries echoing through the night. Some were driven to intervene, to offer a lifeline to the helpless child trapped within the confines of her own home. But fear and uncertainty held them back, paralyzed by the specter of retribution and the fear of what might happen if they dared to speak out. How could a community stand idly by while a child suffered in silence behind closed doors? Stephanie was woken by Brianna's crying at 7.15am on July 19, 2002, and found fresh bruises on her daughter's body. Concerned, she inquired about the course to which the others revealed that they had been a little too rough with her the previous night. Stephanie blatantly ignored her child's injuries despite their inadequate explanation. Later that morning, Stephanie realized Brianna needed a nappy change, so Andy volunteered. Surprisingly, he used a baby wipe wrapped around his finger to torture Brianna into horrible deeds. Stephanie maliciously opted to wait many hours before calling an ambulance for Brianna. When she eventually contacted emergency services, she fabricated a story about her daughter falling from her high chair, evidently deluding herself into thinking the authorities would believe her deceit. In a moment of rage, she struck the defenseless infant with such force that she was damaged and shattered, her little body incapable of enduring the torture. Stephanie and Andy rushed to hide the horrors they'd unleashed while Brianna lay lifeless on the floor, her life draining away with each passing instant. They spun a web of lies and deception anxious to hide their tracks and avoid the repercussions of their deeds. However, their attempts were futile, as the truth about Brianna's terrible death began to emerge in the days and weeks that followed. How could a mother, motivated by love and instinct, become the same thing she intended to keep her kids safe from? As news of Brianna's death spread throughout the community, shock and outrage swept through Las Cruces like wildfire, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. Neighbors, who had long suspected something was amiss within the mobile home, were filled with guilt and regret, haunted by the knowledge that they'd failed to intervene when it mattered most. Others were consumed by anger and disbelief, struggling to comprehend how such unspeakable acts of violence could be committed against a helpless child. Memorials sprung across the city, a stark reminder of the innocent lives lost and the urgent need for change. How could a child's death galvanize a community to action, to stand up and speak out against the horrors of child abuse? Following Brianna's death, the wheels of justice were put into action, with detectives working relentlessly to uncover the web of lies and deception that veiled her untimely death. Stephanie and Andy, motivated by fear and desperation, clung to their version of events, refusing to accept responsibility for the devastation they'd caused. But their efforts to avoid punishment were futile, as the truth about Brianna's killing began to surface in the days and weeks that followed. Witnesses came forward, shedding light on the abuse and neglect that marked Brianna's brief and terrible existence. Forensic evidence created an appalling picture of the horror she'd witnessed, leaving no doubt about the identities of her tormentors. How could those responsible for such unspeakable acts of violence be brought to justice to face the consequences of their actions? Stephanie Lopez, Andy Walters and Andy's brother Stephen Lopez went on trial in October 2003 for their participation in Brianna's death. The courtroom was filled with tension and passion as witnesses described the atrocities they'd witnessed and forensic specialists presented overwhelming proof of Brianna's torture. Stephanie and Andy, desperate to avoid retribution, maintained their version of events, portraying themselves as innocent victims of circumstance. Despite their efforts to divert blame, the jury reached a guilty judgment on all charges. How could a mother, motivated by love and instinct, become the same thing she was intended to keep her kids safe from. As the judge handed down their sentences, the courtroom erupted in applause and cheers, a cathartic release of emotion after years of anguish and grief. Stephanie and Andy were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, while Stephen received a sentence of 57 years behind bars. The verdict brought a sense of closure to the community, a small measure of justice for the innocent life lost. But the wounds would never fully heal for those who had followed Brianna's tragic story. 
How could a community come to terms with the senseless loss of an innocent life to find closure in the face of such an overwhelming tragedy? In the years that followed, Brianna's memory lived on in the hearts and minds of those her story had touched. Memorials were erected in her honor, serving as a reminder of the innocent lives lost and the urgent need for change. Organizations dedicated to preventing child abuse and advocating for victims' rights emerged, fueled by the collective outrage and determination to ensure that no child suffers the same fate as Brianna ever again. How could a child's death galvanize a community to action to stand up and speak out against the horrors of child abuse? Finally, every one of us must take a position against child abuse and actively seek to create safer and more loving conditions for children in our communities. There are various specific actions we may take to make a difference. Consider donating to or volunteering with child welfare organizations, essential in providing resources and assistance to at-risk children and families. Educate yourself and others on the indicators of abuse, allowing them to recognize and report suspected situations of mistreatment. Additionally, push for policy reforms that prioritize children's safety and well-being, whether by supporting legislation to prevent abuse or participating in local lobbying activities. Don't forget to like the video and by sharing it, we can all help build a society where every child is protected and given the chance to thrive. Let's work together to make a difference and ensure that no child experiences what baby Brianna experienced. Thanks for watching.